Hey, let's compare the new Galaxy Book 3 Ultra against Apple's 16-inch MacBook Pro for the M2 Max processor. Hey gang, welcome to Apple Insider. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I'm excited because we have two pretty new laptops here. Samsung just announced the new Galaxy Book 3 line and I have the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra here, so the higher end version uh, this is the i7. There's also an i9 option, but we'll, we'll talk about specs in a few. And then we have the new, the all new 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M2 series processor. This is the M2 Max on the inside. There's an M2 Pro version as well, but some stuff to talk about. So yeah, we've got Apple's brand new MacBook Pro, the all new Galaxy Book 3 Ultra to compare. Let's go ahead and talk about specs, some benchmarks, what I think about these two machines. Laptops are fun to compare, right? I mean, there's a lot of stuff to talk about and they're so unique to each person's use case. But with a laptop especially, we have to consider everything from the portability to the ports to the actual performance of the machine and then how the performance changes from plugging in to just being on the battery. And I've been spending so much time, I've used the new 6-inch MacBook Pro since it launched this year with the M2 Max processor, but I've been using the new uh, Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra for the past week in my spare time. So basically the Mac during the day, the Samsung Galaxy at night, and trying to compare them best I can both in the studio, around the house, and outside of the house as well. And frankly, both of these computers are fantastic. I am loving the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra. It is a fantastic laptop, though there are some limitations that we're gonna talk about. At the same time, as a creator, I love the MacBook Pro. Like, this thing is super hard to beat for creators between just the amount of storage and, and graphics power and everything Apple has done here uh, in the ecosystem. It's gonna be hard for me to ever swap out of. But just a high level point, both of these are great and I wouldn't fault you for choosing either of them, assuming you have a preference or don't have a preference between Mac OS and Windows. So let's go ahead and talk about the specs. So the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra, it's got a 16 inch display. Its resolution is 2880 by 1800. That's definitely lower than the MacBook Pro, which has a 16.2 inch display, but has a resolution of 3456 by 2234. Apple definitely has a higher pixel density here, and it's noticeable. When I'm editing content, looking at photos, I can see a difference between what Samsung is offering and what Apple is offering in terms of the displays. The difference, though, is that while Apple has a great display tech for its displays, Samsung has an AMOLED display that looks amazing. The blacks are incredible, and I love that OLED tech, and I really hope that Apple brings that OLED tech to its Mac portable line sooner rather than later. For ports, the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra has an HDMI 2.0 port as well as two Thunderbolt 4 ports there on the left hand side. On the right hand side, you're going to have that headphone out mic in combo port as well as a USB A port, which is a 3.2 speed, and you have a micro SD card slot. Super peculiar to put a micro SD card slot. While there are a few cameras I have that do use micro SD, by far, most of the cameras are using SD, and if they're not using full-size SD cards, they're using something like CF Express Type B cards, which is even more likely to show up on a laptop. Just the micro SD card slot is just really odd, in my opinion. Now, if we look at the port on the MacBook Pro, down the left-hand side, you're gonna find a MagSafe 3 slot, which is great, and you can charge this thing with up to 140 watts of power because it's using that USB, USB PD 3.1 spec, which is much higher than USB PD 3.0. We also have two more USB Thunderbolt slots. We have a headphone jack, as well as a micro input. And on the right-hand side, we're gonna have an HDMI 2.1 port, which does give us that 240 hertz display output at 4K or an 8K display output there an additional Thunderbolt port, and then a full-size SD. Each of these guys has a 1080p webcam built in. Apple has Touch ID for fingerprint authentication. Samsung has Samsung Pass for fingerprint authentication. They have Wi-Fi 6E on each of these. Great, I'm so happy that Apple finally made the move here to 6E. Samsung is using Bluetooth 5.1, and Apple is using Bluetooth 5.3, though there's not much of a difference. Don't feel like you're missing out on a whole lot if the Samsung only has Bluetooth 5.1. One of the big physical differences is in the weight. 
Samsung only is weighing 3.95 pounds for the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra. This feels very portable. On the Mac side of things, this weighs 4.7 pounds if you have an M2 Pro and 4.8 pounds if you have an M2 Max. Seriously, it's almost a pound more on the 16-inch MacBook Pro than the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra. But let's talk about why and some of the differences there and if it's even important. First off, for pure portability, I think it makes a difference. The Galaxy Book 3, it just feels more portable. It has these like tapered edges that go up that kind of flare. I dig the look of it. It has these like kind of speaker ports and events all around. It feels like a slightly more portable machine, a lot lighter to slip into your bag. The Mac on the other hand is definitely heavier. It's a little bit more bulky. It's got like these squared off edges, which I think look great, but it this is all adding to slightly more weight. There's also more battery, I think, here in this thing. It just feels heavier where that battery lies. It also could be the heat sink in the MacBook Pro because I did notice the fans kicking on a lot more on the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra than they did on the MacBook Pro. Almost nothing I can do on this MacBook Pro makes the fans kick on, which is kind of incredible for creative work. And when they do kick on, they're very faint in the background. I'm just really happy with the thermal performance of these new MacBook Pros. You don't even see really vents at all, but they're here like along the sides and in front of the display. There's kind of a channel here where it shoots up. Whereas the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra, same thing had to do a lot to keep it running at its thermal best. You have this whole fan plate here at the bottom all of these vents for air to be pushed through. You have some going down the sides. And still, again, there's a little vent channels right here just where Apple's is in front of the display. So Samsung is doing a lot to keep the thermal here, uh, the thermal temperatures down. But I think they've maybe conferenced a little bit on the battery as well as the heat sinks to get such a light and portable laptop. But seriously, it looks stunning. I love the look of this, the, the matte black finish is really cool and I like it even more than Apple's Space Gray on the MacBook Pro. Let's talk about the internals. Apple's MacBook Pro can be configured with either an M2 Pro or an M2 Max processor. You can get up to 96 gigs of memory on the inside and it starts off with a 512 gig SSD but you can go all the way up to an eight terabyte SSD. On the Samsung side, this thing comes with either an i7 or an i9 processor on the inside. We're testing out the i7 version here. You can get either 16 or 32 gigs of memory, and you can get 512 or a terabyte of internal SSD storage. Specifically for the processors on the Samsung side, you can get an Intel Core i7-13700H or an Intel Core i9-13900H. Those are your two options. As far as graphics are concerned, you can get an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4050, that's what we're testing here, or the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070. So two graphics configurations. On the Mac side, you're stuck with just the M2 Pro or the M2 Max with their integrated graphics, but you can go all the way up to a 38 core GPU. On Geekbench 6 that was just released, our M2 Max MacBook Pro was scoring a 2738 on the single core score and a 12263 on the multi-core score. The Galaxy Book 3 Ultra scored a 2254 and a 12078, so just below the performance of the MacBook Pro's M2 Max. If you got the i9 processor, that would bump even higher, likely surpassing the M2 Max. But the thing is, that's when connected to power. When I unplugged the power and just left it in basic mode and let it run the test again, we saw drastically different results. Instead, we actually got a 1652 when it was on battery for the single core score and a dwindling 8868 on the multi-core. So battery performance here when just kind of optimized in the middle not nearly as good performance on the Samsung. But of course, that's gonna help extend your battery life further and it depends on what your priorities are, better battery life or better performance. For graphics, the Mac running under OpenCL scored an 83,508 compared to a 71,409 on the Samsung. Again, we're comparing the 38 core M2 Max against the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4050. So using this machine for the past like week or so in all of my off time, I'm so conflicted about it. There's so many good things. I mean, the build quality of this is incredible. I, I love the Space Gray look, obviously. It's what I use on like my Mac. There is, is very good cooling. Here on the bottom, you're not gonna use this on like a soft surface because you're gonna block that. But there's a lot of great things about this machine. I mean, things that Apple usually does that PC manufacturers don't do that kind of get overlooked in your usual usability. But like opening this display up the fact that the base 
stays put is is kind of you don't notice it but the max you can lift up and the display will go perfectly and the base won't move most pcs you'll try to lift the display and the whole thing will go or it'll clap down or you have to hold it with two hands to open it samsung did a great job here this thing just feels very very premium so the product itself i love but then you have those those shortcomings, like the fact that you were capped at 32 gigs of memory. We're gonna go all out with an i9 processor, but you're gonna be capped with 32 gigs of RAM in this. Well, where Apple, who historically doesn't do much on the RAM side, uses up to 96 on the new MacBook Pros. So I think Apple's really catering just to that creative crowd, whereas Samsung is just trying to make a very good PC notebook for your average person. And if someone says, I want more power than what that i7 is offering, which is still basically as good as the M2 Max, if you want more than that on this thing, you have that option, but you're not gonna get more than a terabyte of storage. You're not gonna get more than 32 gigs of memory on this. It's a great laptop, just some odd limitations there. Same thing with uh, the SD card slot. It's a micro SD card. Who is using micro SD really in daily things? Like, yeah, there's some cameras that are out there using it like the GoPros, but most people are gonna use regular SD cards. And I just find that very curious. So what do you think of the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra? How is it compared to Apple's latest and greatest MacBook Pros? Let me know down below in the comments, and if you are interested in either the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra or the new 16-inch or 14-inch MacBook Pros from Apple, I've got some links for you down below in the descriptions with some great deals.